Okay, so we're gonna do acts here. Um, Stay the context acts. I'm just gonna be in the office today. It's a little bit cooler outside, and I'm not ready to do anything fancy. But, however, it's gonna be good nonetheless. Uh, interesting enough, we are gonna start today, hopefully each week, to add another section to these studies, uh, including uh, because we live in Thompson, because we live in Thompson, uh, Manitoba, northern Manitoba, which is the traditional territory of of the Cree people or the Inanimuin. Uh, that's just a shout out to uh, to Crystalyn there. Uh, saw it on her shirt once and learned that from her. Uh, but that's also where this word came from. Uh, she shared with us, uh, word, Cree is a, a language of word construction uh, as opposed to uh, sentence construction uh, or or maybe as well as, uh, if I want to put it that way. Um, so uh, to make a the phrase, Jesus is coming soon, uh, you actually have to uh, modify words. And so uh, we've got uh, Gegat, Gegat Jesus Bedagusen, which is Jesus is coming soon. So Gegat Jesus Bedagusen. It's all one word, uh, and it means Jesus is coming soon. Cree word of the day. Uh, goals for this week are to write a Facebook post explaining what a church is. Share that with this group, or post it and share it with all your friends. That's fine too. Uh, read and think about how you fit into what it says in the Bible every day. So do some devotions. Read the Bible and see how does this apply to me. Uh, Bible was written a long time ago, but uh, it God uses it to apply to our lives today. Uh, tell somebody about how sin equals death, but the gift of God uh, is is eternal life through Jesus. And then also check at least one of the boxes in your public life uh, slash meeting category that you have accomplished in the last two months. These are goals that include um, meeting at, for Sunday morning services, meeting in evening uh, Christian groups together. There's, there's other ones there as well. Uh, some outreach ministry opportunities. All right, let's go to Acts. Uh, the name of the book of the, uh, book Acts uh, comes from the ancient Greek, Greek word praxis, uh, referring to activity engaged in by free men. So this was not actions that were done by slaves, nor was it actions done by kings commanding a whole nation uh, or, or queens or judges or whoever's. Uh, it was specifically referring to the activity engaged in by free men. And thus the Acts of the followers of Jesus uh, is, a, is a good way to describe what the name means. Uh, some people use the phrase the Acts of the Apostles, but uh, it's actually more than that. It, not just apostles are writing books um, uh, in, or are not, not, just, not just apostles are acting out their faith uh, in, uh, in the book of Acts. It is uh, followers of Jesus, so disciples of Jesus. The author uh, in is, is by, I guess, historical consensus is Luke. Um, back to the earliest records we have, Luke is the author. Um, both the style, uh, both the style, the word choice, the language, uh, all those things flow continually from the book of Luke, which is clearly uh, written by Luke. And it, there's seamlessly, there's, there's, it's not even really a gap. It just goes from one to the next. Um, some nice flowers in here. Uh, then we've got, uh, it's interesting enough that we know that Luke is actually with Paul uh, later in the narrative of Acts. Uh, so in the storyline, the history that's recorded in Acts, we know that Luke is actually with Paul later on, and not necessarily by the book of Acts, uh, other than that, there's a little bit of a note there. Um, but we actually find that, that Paul, uh, in uh in Colossians chapter 4, verse 14, Paul writes, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. So Luke is, I mean, Paul is passing on greetings from Luke uh, to the Colossians. And the writer of Acts changes style a little bit. Uh, and he starts saying we and us instead of he and them. Uh, and one example is in Acts chapter 16, verse 10. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. So Luke is not just a is not just a writer; he's actually participating in the actions in the the history that's happening in Acts. The time that's written and covered here is about seven weeks, uh, or forty nine days, fifty days after Jesus was crucified, all the way. Uh, through the spreading of the church and missionary journeys to the west, uh, being Paul all the way to Rome. And so about the time is covered is about 30 AD to 62 AD. And uh, so we know that again, in Acts itself, uh, in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, 
They were all with one accord in one place. Pentecost being 50 days or seven weeks after the Passover, uh, which is when Jesus was crucified. Uh, and then also at the end of Acts, we've got Acts chapter 28, verses uh, 16a. It says, now when we came to Rome. So Luke, the writer, as well as Paul, have now entered Rome at the end of Acts. Acts does not mention the persecution of Christians, including the death of Paul, uh, centered around 64 AD. So it's likely that, the, likely that Acts is written in this two-year window uh, from years 62 to 64 AD. There's a whole bunch of connections with other books of the Bible. Most of the New Testament uh, books are written during the history of Acts or to groups uh, of new Christians called churches that are mentioned in Acts. Uh, the Corinthians, Thessalonians, Galatians, Romans, and others are cl clearly written during the history in Acts. And it's most likely that Luke is writing the book of Luke during this time, uh, as well getting testimony in the earlier parts of Acts, testimony from Peter, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and others. A number of the later books uh, written by Paul, uh, letters were likely written uh, right after Acts ends, while he's still a prisoner in Rome. And uh, we find references to that in books like Philippians, uh, chapter 1, verses 12 to 14. Where it says, But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident in my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So here he's referencing being a prisoner in Rome, uh, which was only happening during that period of 62 to 64 AD. Uh, other books like Ephesians, Colossians, and Philemon also reference Paul being a prisoner. And uh, that's referenced in Acts uh, 28, 30 to 31, uh, where it says, Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. So he was in a sort of house arrest uh, in Rome. The purpose of Acts uh, is the recorded history of the followers, followers of Jesus spreading out to make dis disciples, to preach the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. It, it, it focuses on God's faithfulness and, uh, and the, the equipping power of God as he takes and uses people to spread his kingdom. Uh, he does so by equipping them and empowering them with the Holy Spirit uh, as, well as, as well as by actually doing miracles. Uh, in roughly 30 years, the... Jesus' disciples, by all accounts, these were regular people uh, from many different walks of life. Uh, they had a willingness to let God work in their life and let the Holy Spirit work in them, even to changing paradigms and changing their attitudes towards people. Uh, they allowed that to happen, and, and God changed their lives and changed. He, 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 he facilitated the transforming passing uh, on a relationship with God uh, through Christ over a distance of over 5,000 kilometers. And that's just the westward, westward branch in 30 years. Within 600 to 1,600 years, the entire earth had had heard regionally uh, about Jesus. They had, he had sent out uh, his people, God's people, had been to almost every place on, on earth. Uh, obviously, there's little corners and people who haven't heard. Even today, there's people who used to have whose ancestors heard, but now they haven't heard. It's more complicated than that. But the message of Jesus spread out across the entire globe uh, relatively quickly. And in those first 30 years, just the westward branch uh, was 5,000 kilometers. Uh, 